past eight years, Void of Vision have been honing in on their craft and making a name for themselves not only in Australia but across the globe too. And with each and every release that comes out, we see a different side of the band. Their brand new release, Chronicles 1, Lust, is a fantastic EP which tackles some hard-hitting subjects very close to frontman Jack Burgeon. So what better chance to talk more about it and uh, get him on the show to uh, talk about it is... Let's, let's do it right now. Let's get him on. Jack, welcome. Hello, mate. How are you? Mate, bloody brilliant. I'm still getting used to this whole interviewing people over the internet kind of thing. Like, normally we'd have a bit of a catch up <laughs> and talk about life beforehand, but now it's all digitally and in, in, inside the computer screen. That's it. It's a bit odd, but yeah, I guess we've been making do for the past couple of years, so I think we're on track now. But at least it's going to come back soon. We've got a light at the end of the tunnel. Exactly, we do. And we'll talk about uh, that coming up very shortly. But let's take very a look good. at the fact that you guys put out your brand new EP, Chronicles 1, last uh, four new tracks. And you're heading in that EDM kind of metal-y, core direction that we have known you guys for. But for this instance, uh, we're not going to focus on the music and the breakdowns and all of that. There are some hard-hitting themes that uh, have been released on this EP. Can you take us through the, the mindset of how long you've been sitting on this and, and where that all uh, stemmed from? I think um, just a elongated state of reflection, really, to be honest, over the past however long we've been in lockdown. Um, and uh, part of, I'll digress really quickly, I think that's why a lot of people are going to connect with this because we've all been stuck just sort of on our own and on our lonesome for so long just within lockdowns in our certain respective states. And it's just had a lot of time for us to think about who we are as people, like where we stand on certain issues and um, in certain places like our views etc and i think that um all that time has got a lot of people like breaking out of i guess uh, a flood of negativity i feel like i'd found myself in there um i, I was mentioning to a friend earlier that um after hyper days i'd kind of just sort of made a lot of that negativity my personality and myself i may not like seem as that kind of person by interview or like um by meeting like people in person but it's just sort of sunk into me that um it's been a certain time in between drinks of recording sessions. I haven't really had a lot of time to really think about where I lie on those issues. And I think the development that I saw coming into this EP was just crazy. Like the amount of things that have changed in the past few years in my life. And I realized I just didn't really want to be that person anymore. I didn't want to have that negative space and those connotations attached to me. And I think um, moving forward as a more progressive thinking, uh, person who amongst a lot of negative situations in our world is a lot more of a, a person I aspire to be. And I think that this EP is kind of the beginning of my journey of that sort of person. So yeah, yeah. there was a lot of things thematically that I touched on. Uh, I think we're going to get into that um, were really important that I thought and it was great to finally like click into that and actually talk absolutely about it. like like the, the progression as we've spoken about your your band has just gone from strength to strength with every release that's come out but your songwriting itself and your i guess your your personal growth and your own adventure uh through life yeah. we're seeing that as as you grow i guess you could say so we're growing with you and watching you grow as a human being but also as a singer songwriter musician it's pretty crazy. It's like a uh, open diary sort of situation, isn't it? It's, it's very, um, I, I often do think about that a lot and it's, it's quite confronting the idea of, but you, you just don't think about it. You kind of get caught up in your own words and your own change. And it's, yeah, it's really cool to be in the position to be honest, because I feel like people do help your decision-making and they have a lot of impact on your thought process through this open diary experience. And yeah, I, I dare say that a lot of fans and friends have obviously seen me grow over the past few years. And a lot of that has impacted the direction I've headed of this growth. And yeah. And look, as you, as you write each release that comes out, we see a different side of you and you, you, you become, I guess you could say, more, more approachable on certain subjects and things like that. Like obviously in the past, like people will come up to you at shows and go, mate, that was a sick breakdown. Can you teach me how to scream? Things along the lines of that. But then you go into talking about the songs, like for example, The Lonely People, where it reflects on the past two years where the entire music and arts industry has been completely left 
uh, to its own devices to, to struggle through the COVID pandemic and come out the other side, hopefully, you know, still a band, still in tatters, still have a career and, and you know, aspects and things like that. So that to me yeah. was like your way of reaching out to everyone and saying, this is a call to arms. This is our song to say, you know, a big fuck you to those who haven't helped us. That's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It was a very odd silver lining to find that, um, everyone was going through the same thing and then at times where i thought oh god this is just like it's been an awful year for myself and my friends it is a whole industry-wide thing like we're not left in the dark in this and everyone has been uh, just popped into this situation and plucked out of thin air just what are we doing with our lives now like it's just insane i think we're slowly as I said, seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, but at the same time, it's just been very difficult without the support and the help that a lot of other industries um, have seen. And I know you're a very forefronted man for this sort of thing, as I've seen, and it's, it's absolutely agreeable. And it is something that is very frustrating, but to be able to sort of band together as creatives and have that same outlook has been very refreshing. I think it's helped a lot of my um, process of this past year or two and having those people that I work with and that I'm sharing stages with usually in that same boat as myself to help like just air my frustration has been extremely helpful. And I guess that's what this song is for. It's for all of us really. It's exactly that. You've got your frustrations, you're putting it out there. People who might not be able to articulate what you're going through. So, you know, say for example, the roadies, the 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 lighting crew, you know, the audio engineers who don't have a musical career, but you know, their careers have been paused because of the fact that no shows can come back. And it's such a it's a really disheartening thing to see the entire music industry suffering for, through all of this. Uh, but yeah. I guess one, one, of, one of the only positives that I guess could come from this is the anger, the fight, the, the togetherness of the community banding together to, you know, see these results and, and have these shows come back and, and, you know, prove that, yes, music and the arts industry is one thing, but it's, it's also as big and, and does more for the industry and, and the country as the sporting industry, I guess you could say. Yeah, that's that's a big example too. And I think that, yeah, you're right. The connectivity of just everyone in the same boat has definitely amped up, I guess. I, I'm noticing difference in conversations with people. I'm, I'm even still meeting people over the internet in this industry and it's not slowing down that by any means. And I think I'm noticing the connectivity is just, it's growing, if anything. Like, I think people are going to come out very differently on the other side of this in the way their outlook on everything is because we, we almost lost everything. And yeah. I think it's at that point that we realize how important it all really is to us. And that's everyone, like you said, from the roadies from the crew, from the people who are putting on the damn shows. Like it's a whole gigantic industry that is never going to look back in the same thing ever again. And I think we're going to come out of this stronger than ever. Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone needs to band together and, and support each other through this scene and then, you know, spread the word out there to all the other industries and uh, the politicians and everyone who's involved with making these decisions and all of that. Um, that's just one aspect that you've tackled with this EP. The other one comes from uh, your latest single, Vampire, which touches on the uh, toxic culture which is happening throughout the music industry. Over the past 10 years, we've seen a dynamic change in more uh, acceptability, more uh, involvement from, from anyone and everyone across the scene, but there's still some issues that you've come across which obviously inspired this song. Absolutely. Like, like you said, there are visible changes happening at the moment. And I think that's, that's incredibly important as a first step to take. And I think that uh, there is still like a uh, lot of toxic culture behind the scenes that it's fairly deep rooted. And I think it's been a thing for decades and that's just speaking for itself and how tired this, this state of mind is and that it shouldn't be like that in the, the era that we're living in at the moment where we're so accepting of just, equality and everything in the music industry like that needs to be elevated of course but you can see why that's such an issue with the way that things have been for so long and yeah i i think we're all a part of this mission and if it means just perhaps even pouring your thoughts out like we have in this song to sort of start a wave i mean like it's going to help a lot of people i think realize that who have perhaps been standing idly um behind and yeah you can agree with um a point of view and say that it's the right thing to think but until you sort of make those steps to create a safer space and make everyone feel a lot more comfortable I, it just begins there i think and if once everyone is feeling accepted and comfortable where they are then that's when everyone can really just band together 
that's exactly. I mean, we've seen evidence of this at shows with everyone, you know, pointing out the creeps and scumbags that assault people and uh, you, you, the, the ones who literally go to a show just to start a fight and all of that. We've seen a subsiding of that, but it's all about an all-inclusive kind of thing. Everyone needs to get involved with this in order to get it happen uh, happening. And I guess, you know, by creating a song like this where you're talking about the mistreatment of women in the music industry, it gives um, us an opportunity to scream these words back at you once we learn them, but then also to take away from the song and go, hold on, there's some pretty important things to this song that I should prob probably be listening to and study the lyrics and then so on and so forth. You pass it on to mates, you pass it on to other people on the scene and then slowly but surely it creates that movement. It creates that, uh, that talk, that conversation. That's what I mean. And it's honestly the least we can do. Like I, I think we've seen in the past year, like, a lot of things have just um, sort of come out and come forth. Like, of, of course, like last night, there was this massive Four Corners thing on um, that um, facing the music. And it's just about the expose on um, Dennis Hanlon and Sony. And I guess how that company has sort of started. Um, it's just come out with all this news now. And it wouldn't have happened without him there. And I think there is this sort of fear at a higher level of this whole, like the whole court system of australia is obviously not in favor of victims um it's very difficult um of course like say if this is still involved in the music industry it's very difficult for people to come forward against musicians and people of higher power because it's not going to treat them fairly it's almost like it's against the victims and i think that's out of our control for now yes it's something that obviously needs to be shifted at a higher level and things need to come forth like that but we can begin by just even calling out your mates like if you see something of ill behavior and just start there like it's obviously a gigantic culture problem that obviously has been kept in some people's brains and whether that's like a family yeah. upbringing thing or whatever it's just so important to really just talk to these people and like if you see it at shows like i don't know i definitely do and it's it's awesome to be able to be in this community where we can talk to each other about this sort of thing and i want people to know that that is a safe space and if i need to see someone and like call them out like not during the show perhaps but maybe after like that's the most important thing that I could potentially do in that scenario and just to be there and listen really exactly and one of the you know the the hardest things that people always say is it always takes courage to speak out but if you don't speak out then this person's just going to get away with it time and time again and I guess from what you were saying before as well being a culture thing grow, you know growing up in the heavy music scene for the past 12 13 years or so we've seen that dynamic change from back in the day where it was you know jump in the crowd and crowd kill people for the sake of you know enjoying yourself but now it's like everyone looks after each other and that's one aspect that's changed this is just simply another thing where the next cog needs to spin and people need to get involved with it that's it man and i think yeah once one person has made that wave it's going to affect like at least another person and i think it's these baby steps that count the most importantly because the end goal is that everyone is on top of this and of course we can't spread that without people talking about it like we exactly. are like yeah like, like, you're like saying. we are right now like you are with with vampire with this new ep well what, what would you yeah. say what would you say the biggest thing or biggest things are that you've learned about yourself over the past year you know chucking yourself in isolation have everything having everything cut off from you and having that ability to sit there with your own thoughts and realize what kind of direction you personally want to head forward i think once i realized i could like i didn't have to be in this negative mind space like i didn't have to associate that with my general well-being and that's not my that's not my end game it's not my master plan when i could realize that that's when i could start helping other people and thinking about how other people are being affected throughout my life and there is a lot going on and i think that the fact that i could just sort of tune out of myself much easier once i'd learned to deal with my own i guess mechanism it's much more friendly on the other people as well like i can actually start making a bit of a difference in other people's lives mm. rather than just my own and it's something that starts with you so even if it's just a simple check in with your mates kind of thing send a couple of text messages or you know catch up with someone for lunch when we're eventually allowed to get back to that sort of normal routine again especially for you all, all in melbourne who you know my heart goes out to you all and everything <laughs> you've been through but at the end of this i i can foresee everyone who walk, comes out of this in melbourne as like the stronger versions of themselves and like the people who no one will want to fuck with because of what you've been through. <laughs> Thank you, man. It, it is, it has been rough. I'm not going to lie, but I think, yeah, there's, there has been some weird silver linings. Like I touched on before, like 
yeah there's there's been a lot more conversations being had i think in this time of thought and i think that's the most important part of it all that everyone's going to come out yeah they are probably going to be a bit more calloused on the other side but all for the best like it's going to be a different world i'm hoping when we're out of this and yeah that's i'm looking forward to it i'm i know it's probably being beat on like a dead horse at the moment but yeah absolutely looking forward to it there is nothing wrong with looking forward to the future and talking about that. Obviously, uh, Dan Andrews being the first uh, East Coast premier to announce a sort of road to recovery for the music industry, saying that gigs are going to be returning to small size venues by October 30, an injection of uh, and an injection of 15 million dollars to the industry to help the creative industry. Are you optimistic that the future is going to be as easy as jumping back on the horse again, or do you foresee a, a slow and steady race to get back to where you were? I'm honestly not too sure, man. I am seeing a slow and steady race, to be honest, um, over anything. Like, I feel like that news was absolutely brilliant, like, when I saw it pop up. But it felt so weird because I I, I just saw it all come through and I I just felt kind of, like, I don't know, a bit numb to it because it's just been so long and it's almost been, like, too little too late, in a sense, for some people. I know, like, uh, there's a lot of crew and there's a lot of musicians who have had to seek out other forms of employment who this was their life and now it's just sort of a a climb back for them in that sense definitely slow and steady but yeah i mean it's an absolute positive foot forward that i'm very happy to see and finally right like it's yeah it's nice to get some final recognition (laughs) and this giant scope of i guess the world recovering but yeah I really shouldn't laugh at a situation like that because, yeah, it, it has literally been a long time coming. And it, like you're saying, it, it's disbelief. It, it was like, am I reading this? Is, some, is a politician literally happy, helping the industry? Because it's been so long with them not saying anything or not replying to emails and everything like that. Legit, man. It's, yeah, it was, it, it, it yeah, it just felt weird. And I, I think I messaged the group chat of the band and I was just like, we were all kind of like, huh? Like, <laughs> oh, I, okay. Like, well, I, I guess that's good. <laughs> but yeah, it's, a, it's, I think it's a slow and steady road ahead. But yeah, I can definitely see a lot more of light at the end of the tunnel now. Well, one thing you've got to be going in towards that light at the end of the tunnel is uh, with an MO of new material. Obviously, you got to tour a couple of shows from memory. No, actually, you got to do the full tour of the Hyper Days tour before the world turned the shit. You've put out the Hyper Days Redux, and now we've got the Chronicles 1 EP Lust. Obviously, taking a look at that number there, and it stands out to me, are we going to see a, a series of EPs underneath this, this byline of uh, Chronicles? There is going to be more. Um, I think we wanted to come out of the gates um, with Chronicles 1 with a more explosive um, sort of type of Vov and something a bit like, I guess, baptised by fire in a sense. And um, I think it's it's going to be... Uh, there's a long road ahead for this process. It's something that we definitely like wrote with COVID in mind, um, not knowing when there was going to be a proper normal to come back to. So I think um, what we have coming is it's going to be for every sort of crowd of people that um, are possibly into or could ever get into VOV. So, yeah, it's it's exciting. I don't think I've ever seen people do something in this sense. And yeah. I think that's how we want to kind of approach it, our releases from here on in. Like with um, Redux, I, I think that was nice and refreshing to see for people in our scene and, I'm hoping that we can continue to do some exciting stuff with releases for the very well, near future. So yeah, I love I love the fact that you mentioned it's a long road because straight away <laughs> that the first thought that came to my mind was last is part of the seven deadly sins. So could we be seeing <laughs> seven EPs from Void of Vision over the next few months? You need to be writing the marketing plans, man. That's much better than what we have. <laughs> Don't trust anything I say. Trust me. I just look at it. I'm like, hold on. That, that, that relates to that. That's what that could be. That's what they're doing. <laughs> That's all I can hope for, honestly, at the end of the day. But yeah, um, I think there's, there's a lot more in the pipeline, as um, you're suggesting, so people can have that to look forward to. Perfect. And one thing we really want to look forward to is your return to the stage. Uh, one of those chances will be at Night and Day Festival where you're hitting the stage at a fucking castle in Ballarat. <laughs> what never, a way to come back. <laughs> in a million years, would I, would I imagine a whole bunch of metal, metalcore bands and alternative acts performing at a fucking castle for that? How are you boys all hyped up about you know that return? 
I, I think it's like a fever dream at this stage for our first potential show to be back at a castle in Ballarat, like you say. And it's, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very stoked. I think it's, um, it's super cool to see this sort of stuff happen again. It reminds me like, of, I guess when the flyer got sent through, I, it reminded me instantly of like Soundwave and all the, the themes that they had on and people didn't necessarily like dress up or like get with those themes, but I feel like night and day is this opportunity for people to do so. And um, that's what I'm most excited for. I think it's going to be just a huge New Year's party in and uh, that's all yeah. I could ever ask for. Two, two days in a castle with a bunch of metal, uh, metal bands and you can rock up if you want wearing your metal jousting gear, I guess. So, you know, just add to the whole the whole festive, the festival atmosphere of like going to a music festival and dressing up for it. I miss those those times and those years. Oh, absolutely, man. And just to top it off, to send off the absolute year that has been it would just be a dream to be able to do it in that environment. It'll, and like I said, it will probably feel like a fever dream for the vast majority of it, but I'm there for it. I'm absolutely all there for it. I look forward to looking on stage and seeing like every single musician, sound tech and uh, roadie like absolutely bawling their eyes out going, we fucking did it. We absolutely did it. It's the sight. I can see it, dude. It's going to be fucking awesome. All right. Well, the brand new EP Chronicles 1 Lust from Void of Vision is out right now. Go check it out on streaming. Do everything you can to help these boys and every other musician in Australia get back into the scene. And uh, hopefully we can see more shows as this year ends and the uh future opens up jack it's been an absolute pleasure as always thanks for stopping by wall of sound likewise mate thank you so much for having me wall of sound.